Good evening, everyone. Love it. <laughs> My name is John Stryker. I'm the president of Temple Emmanuel, and I welcome you all to our sanctuary this evening. This is the second time our two historic congregations, the Abyssinian Baptist Church and Temple Emmanuel of the City of New York, have joined together in celebration and commemoration of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Those of you who were with us last year rem remember that worship service as inspirational, educational, uplifting, and entertaining. Last year, although certainly no one said that things were perfect, there was very much a feeling of retrospection, looking back and celebrating how much had been accomplished in the 50 years since the March on Washington and Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech. Now, a year later, now 50 years after the Selma to Montgomery marches, events in the streets in our city of New York and events in the streets of Paris make it clear that there remain still much to overcome. We still have a job to do, and that is why an evening like this is so important to us all. I would like to introduce now our senior rabbi, Joshua Davidson, to continue our service. Thank you. Thank you, John. I, too, would offer a warm Shabbat Shalom, good evening, and welcome to our Sabbath service honoring the life and legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Temple Emmanuel is a house of prayer for all people, and all who would worship with us here in peace are most welcome in this house of God. And tonight, we are especially proud to welcome back members of the Abyssinian Baptist Church their extraordinary choir under the direction of James Davis, Jr., Abyssinian's Director of Music Ministries and Fine Arts, and organist Dina Foster Osborne, and their dynamic pastor, the Reverend Dr. Calvin O. Butts III. Indeed, it is a special privilege for me to welcome him. I'm delighted to be joined on the BIMA by my partner, our President John Stryker, and by those sharing in the leading of our worship, my wonderful colleagues, Rabbi Amy Ehrlich, Rabbi Ben Zeidman, Cantor Lori Corson, student cantor Richard Newman, and Temple Emanuel's own magnificent choir, under the direction of Kay Scott Warren and Dr. Andrew Henderson. Tonight, though, through much of our service, the two choirs will sing as one, as our two congregations pray as one. As Emmanuel's members know, every week of the Jewish year is assigned a particular reading from the Torah, the five books of Moses. And so I ask you, if you had to choose a book with which to honor the birthday of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., what book would it be? Exodus. And every year, his birthday seems to find us in that book. In Hebrew, we would say that's beshert, meant to be. Moses and Martin, each standing before the Pharaoh of his day, call him Ramses, call him Jim Crow, demanding, let my people go. Indeed, Dr. King was acutely aware of the parallels between the historic sufferings of the Israelites and those of his own people. He never compared himself to Moses, but the comparison is a good one. Each man chose to involve himself in the struggles of his people. Neither had to. Moses could have remained secure in Pharaoh's palace. King could have remained behind the pulpit of Montgomery's Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. And each led his people amidst a wilderness. Moses' wilderness was the Sinai Desert. King's was America's own Deep South and each sought freedom under law. Moses led the Israelites to Mount Sinai to receive the Torah, which legislates the sacred responsibilities of one human being toward another. Dr. King worked to change the laws of this country that, so that civil rights would become a sacred guarantee. And he left a legislative legacy 
including the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, and the Fair Housing Act. And finally, of course, neither Dr. King nor Moses lived to see all of his visions realized. Moses was permitted only to glimpse the promised land, not to enter. Were Dr. King alive today, he too would be waiting to enter. Racism remains so entwined in the fabric of our social structures, we don't even recognize it until tragedies like the police killings of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Tamir Rice in Cleveland, and Eric Garner in New York throw it into sharp and painful relief, and tensions boil into confrontation endangering everyone, including police officers, the majority of whom do care deeply about protecting all of us, no matter our color or our faith. Yes, racism is alive and well in America. Sixty years after the murder of Emmett Till and the Montgomery bus boycott, 50 years since the passage of the Voting Rights Act, the disparity between blacks and whites in education, jobs, health care, and housing remains a moral catastrophe. And we Jews in America need to understand that the ladder of upward mobility, which many of us were able to climb successfully generations ago, has seen its rungs all but collapse. The percentage of African Americans represented among the poor and uninsured in this country is far greater than it has ever been for Jews. The effects of slavery linger in voter disenfranchisement and de facto segregation in many school systems. Yet Jewish moral outrage, while vocal in some quarters, has been largely missing in action, which is stunning because we too are victims. Anti-Semitism is also alive and well. We witnessed another tragic outbreak last Friday in Paris when a week of unspeakable terror concluded with an attack on a kosher grocery market. After a summer of anti-Semitic violence and rhetoric worse than anything Europe has known since the Holocaust, the French Jewish community again lives in fear. Following services here last Shabbat, I met a young couple from Paris who were nearly in tears. And last Friday's violence triggered other anti-Semitic incidents and retribution against innocent Muslims, whose security, too, is greatly imperiled by those who hijack that faith. I have spoken to Emmanuel's members about Holocaust survivor Hedy Epstein, whose childhood experiences still alive and at work within her, was among those arrested in August protesting on the streets of Ferguson. She knew what we know. Anti-Semitism and racism emanate from the same pathology, the failure to discern in those who are different a common humanity. Exacerbated by ignorance, often nursed by blame and fear, the disease still eats away at the fabric of society. But in our being together tonight, we find hope. And from Dr. King's legacy, we take our direction. He taught us that whether by boycotting buses or marching in solidarity, we can make a difference. As Moses lived on in Dr. King, Dr. King lives on in us. And so we gather together this special Sabbath Eve with sacred purpose to affirm that though Dr. King has died, his dream has not. We gather because we hear in his words an affirmation of our own religious convictions and because we know that only by reaching out across religious and racial lines in ongoing dialogue and partnership can we address the challenges our society faces and find the way out of the wilderness of injustice and ignorance to the land of freedom and promise. 
Dr. King and Rabbi Heschel knew it. So did Reverend Abernathy and Rabbi Eisendrath. Their picture is on the cover of your service. And we know it. We can be the conveners of an intercommunal dialogue to build the bridges that heal our divides. Together, we can make real Dr. King's dream. Tonight, together, we celebrate that dream. Two historic congregations, Temple Emmanuel and the Abyssinian Baptist Church, led by the Reverend Dr. Calvin O. Butts III, its renowned pastor and president of the State University of New York College at Old Westbury. Under Dr. Butts's devoted leadership, Abyssinian Baptist Church has undertaken countless community development initiatives to address homelessness, senior citizen, and youth empowerment, cultural awareness, and ecumenical outreach. The Reverend was one of the founders and is currently chairman of the Abyssinian Development Corporation, a comprehensive community-based not-for-profit organization responsible for over $600 million in housing and commercial development in Harlem. He was also instrumental in establishing the Thurgood Marshall Academy for Learning and Social Change, public state-of-the-art lower, intermediate, and high schools in Harlem. Dr. Butts has spearheaded numerous boycotts against institutions practicing racist policies and employment discrimination. He led a nationally acclaimed and most effective campaign to eliminate negative billboard advertising in central Harlem and New York City and he was at the vanguard of exposing rap music with violent and negative lyrics targeted at women. Dr. Butts is a native New Yorker. After earning a Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy from Morehouse College in Atlanta, he returned to New York and earned his Master's of Divinity in Church History from Union Theological Seminary and his Doctorate of Ministry in Church and Public Policy from Drew. Dr. Butts, has been conferred with honorary degrees from multiple colleges and universities, including Morehouse, Muhlenberg, Trinity, and the City College of New York, where he was also an urban affairs instructor and adjunct professor in the African Studies Department. He has taught black church history at Fordham and continues to lecture at colleges and universities throughout the United States and abroad. Dr. Butts was president of AfriCare, an organization dedicated to improving quality of life in rural Africa, president of the Council of Churches of the City of New York, vice chair of the board of directors of United Way of New York City, chairman of North General Hospital in Harlem, chairman of the board of the Harlem Branch YMCA, and of the National Black Leadership Commission on AIDS. He remains a member of the Presidential Advisory Council on HIV AIDS, and serves on the board of New Visions for Public Schools and the American Baptist College in Nashville. The recipient of numerous commendations and honors, Reverend Butts has received the Man of the Year Award from the Morehouse College Alumni Association and was recognized as a living treasure by the New York City Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Dr. Butts is consistently invited to preach in distinguished pulpits throughout New York, the United States, and around the world and we look forward to his inspiring words later in our service.